Welcome back to the King's View Model Railway Channel. Today we're going to talk DCC basics and specifically we're going to talk Digitrax basics because uh, out there in uh, video land there's not a whole lot about just the basic operation of uh, DCC and how basically it works. So in this video we're just going to show you some of the basics for Digitrax DCC control. <laughs> said we're going to talk about uh, DCC and DCC basics. So on the left you can see a steam engine sitting on the track and you can see a diesel engine sitting on the right. Now uh, train, the, you know, the model train hobby is split up into two camps. It's called the DC camp and the DCC camp. Now DC means direct current and DC means digital cab control. So, so the difference between the two is simple is that with DC uh, all of your locomotives are controlled by applying a variable voltage to the track, across the tracks, across the positive and negative of the track, and usually using a simple rheostat based controller, it will just vary the voltage and the train will just go faster and slower. Now, where that becomes an issue is where, like on this layout here, as you can see, you know, we've got multiple locomotives. Uh, you know, you can see here in the picture there's multiple locomotives. Now, the only way on a DC layout that you would be able to do that is to have what's called sections. That means that between the tracks, you would have to have two insulators. You would have to cut the wires between the two tracks that have got the two insulators and put a switch on there and then control the power through each one of those tracks. So with DCC operation, which is what the Kingsview Model Railway is, um, we don't have to do that because every locomotive has got a computer chip fitted to it. DCC chips are broken up into two types. There, um, there's non-sound chips and then there are chips that have a sound function with an additional speaker fitted inside the locomotive or the wagon that you might have. But uh, typically uh, most people probably go for a DCC sound chip. In this particular case I'm just dropping into the screen here. This is a 21 pin uh, four function chip uh, for, uh, supplied by Hattons in the UK which uh, don't exist anymore but a simple chip like this um, would retail around the 50 to 60 dollar mark um, but in reality um, you know you can get sound chips um, from 165 dollars right up to 280 dollars and uh, common brands include uh, uh, Zimo and ESU and TCS uh, are the most common ones on our layout here, we've standardised on the Digitrax system because it's also compatible with my local club. And you know, Digitrax is a, is a world-renowned brand. Uh, it's very stable. It's uh, highly sophisticated and comes as a control unit and a number of uh, modular units, including plug-in uh, control units and also uh, hands-free units that look a little bit like this. Now, this particular controller has, uh, this is the top of the range one, it has two throttles, right hand and left, uh, just here on the top. It also has an alphanumeric display here as well, so that you can see what the locomotive and the functions that you've got set. Now with DCC, uh, you have a number of functions that can be set on locomotives depending on uh, what the chip you've got and what functions have been loaded. So with a sound chip, uh, there'll be a number of sounds loaded. There'll be you know, the main chuff, there'll be whistles, there'll be uh, brake clanking, there'll be couplers uncoupling and whatever. And they're all controlled by uh, functions, whether you press function 5, 6, 7, 9, could be any particular function. So what we're going to do is just show you today just some of the basics, not going to go into the full detail, but just some of the basics so that you get a bit of an understanding and a bit of an introduction to DCC and how good it can be on your layout. So on this particular controller, that my previous locomotive here was number 9, we're going to set this locomotive over here, number 19. So we make sure that we've got the left loco selected. Here the right one is controlled. Press left, left throttle active. Press the locomotive button. Then press 1919 and then press the loco again. 
and that locomotive will now be active. So as we twist the knob, we can see the locomotive move and we'll just pull it up and stop there. Now this particular locomotive is fitted with a number of uh, features. One, the sound is number one, so if we press eight, you can hear it uh, fire up. And I press two, you can hear the whistle. Um, and there's a number of other sounds. There's the steam blow off valve, and off you go. Now, importantly, with DCC systems, the controller can only take so many addresses. You know, on average, yeah, it might be 100 addresses or 200 addresses. The particular one that I've got will take up to 400 addresses. Now, that sounds like a lot, but when you've got locomotives going on and off your tracks all the time, you can eventually get to a position called slot max, and that'll come up on your keyboard here, and it'll say slot equals max. That means now that you can't put any more uh, locomotives into your system and you have to clean, you have to basically delete all of uh, the locomotives from your systems. Now some of the Digitrack controllers make this easy, some of them you've got to use the keypad to do it, but uh, look that up in your particular manual. But a good housekeeping tip is with your controller, if I don't want this locomotive anymore, there's two things or three things I always do. The first thing before finishing up a running session, always make sure your controller is set back to 0% throttle. If you've got sound, turn it off and then just go loco X or uh, dispatch. What that does is that dispatches the locomotive now out of the Digitrack system and we'll now see that I can't run it. But that means now that I've got a space on the computer chip now to uh, add another locomotive into the system. So again, very simply, press that button, uh, which is the little locomotive button, press the X and that will delete it. Now, if I want to start a running session again with this locomotive, all I have to do is press loco, wait until it flashes like that, you can see it flashing, and then press loco again, and that reactivates that loco and you'll see that it will now move off as you can see in the background. Now you're probably wondering why, I'll just move out of there, you're probably wondering why I've got two locomotives fronting each other. But as you can see, I've also got over here, if I press the right hand side, I can now push in this number here. Now this is a five digit locomotive, so I've always programmed the first four digits. So in this case, it's 4422, so I go loco, 4422 loco and I can now either go forward or I can go backwards. Now in this case it wouldn't be good to go forward so I'll two hits on just by pushing the controller and I can now go backwards and you'll see that the loco will start to move backwards. Now in this particular loco's case again it's got sound as well You can hear it firing up there. And these particular locos from Oscision have got a great sound profile. They've got oh, well over 10 sound functions, so they sound very, very uh, realistic. And like real diesels, uh, you can have what's called the notch effect. You can run them under load, uh, and you know, they're very realistic. They also have a combination of lights on the front as well, so that you can have either the headlights or the running or the number boards or the little marker lights as well and you know they just come on very very simply by by pressing uh, different different combinations of numbers but the importance of what I'm showing you here of these two locomotives is these are both running on the same piece of track so I'll just kill the sound on that loco and hear it run down very realistic but the importance of what I'm showing you here is that I can run both of these locomotives essentially towards each other, as you can see there in the video. That means I can run any number of trains on the one track. So if you've got a large layout, like around here, I can run multiple trains and uh, you know that's, a, that's often a very realistic way to uh, operate your railway. So. Um, DCC 
I have to thoroughly recommend it as a, as a concept on your layout. It does cost more money because in each of this case, you know, this locomotive you know, can be purchased without a, a, D, a DCC sound chip and this one can be as well and they can run on DC and they'll probably cost you a couple of hundred dollars less per locomotive. So it does add up pretty quick. When you look at the layout here and you look at all of the uh, locomotives, you know, there's in excess of 60 locos, so you know, uh, you don't have to be a mathematician to work out how much DC and DC sound costs. But from a realism point of view, you know, when you're running, um, trying to run realistic trains and trying to run uh, realistic running sessions, you really do need DCC. The advantage also with DCC is that you can fit uh, little capacitors called stay alives. These little units are uh, typically pretty small. This is what one looks like. I'll bring it up a bit closer to the screen here. This is uh, a Soundtrack's current keeper or stay alive unit. Comes with a couple of wires and these fit inside your locomotive and connect to the DCC chip. But what these do, these are inside here, these are capacitors. And what capacitors do is slowly discharge when the voltage is removed from them. So what this means is that your locomotives, when they're running, if they hit a little dead spot on your track, they will keep running for one to three seconds, depending on the size of this little uh, capacitor pack or keep alive pack. And that enhances the running of your locomotives across track, particularly if your track is not exactly perfect. So give that a consideration. Now these range anywhere from $20 to $50, depending on what they are. You, look, you could even make them yourself, go down to your local electronics store, work out what kind of capacitors are in there and wire them up. And But not all chips, not all DCC chips are capable of taking these little units, but uh, if they are, wire them in, if you've got space for them in your locomotive, and not every loco does. Once you've um, got that fitted in, you'll find then that that's um, a much better way to run your locomotives. The other clear advantage of DCC is slow speed, realistic running. Now, I'm just going to notch this loco up. I'm now on 6%, 7%, 8% of the throttle, this unit here, and you can see the locomotive just inching along here. I'll turn the sound on to make it even a little bit more realistic. But you can see just how much this logo can just creep along. And you can hear it notching up. Notching up is when the driver pulls on the throttle another notch or two. But you can see it just creeps along. And then when I stop, you can hear it just comes to a stop. You can hear the air brake even go off. Another clear advantage of DCC, you can hear um, all sorts of different sounds, um, you know, with the loco running. You can select the whistle, and often in some sound chips there's even different sounds again. But again, I just want to reiterate, DCC, because of the fact that the track is actually running on AC, and it, it's actually the chip that controls the motor speed, not the voltage on the track, you'll find that you can run at very, very slow speeds. And with new modern motors, um, you can just run along at extremely slow speeds, which is very difficult, if not impossible, to do on DC. Just, you can easily press the button and you can see it just creeping along without the sound running there. So to sum up, a Digitrax controller is a great way to run your layout. Again, with an alphanumeric display, you can see here, you can see the speed notch at the moment is set at zero. I can see I've got it set in forward direction. I can see the locomotive number. Just runs on simple uh, three AA batteries in the back, of which with more than 12 months of use, I've only replaced the batteries once, so it's been quite good. But again, uh, housekeeping, press that locomotive button, press the X, and that will dispatch your locomotive. Just like in the real world, you know, locomotive gets parked in the siding, it gets dispatched away for the evening or whatever until it's got its next load. Now, if I crank up the throttle, you'll see 
it says uh, right throttle inactive and that's because it hasn't got a locomotive set. Another advantage with the controller too, depending on where you are, um, this is a, again a wireless unit and it runs from a little sensor at the top. But you also have the track on, track off button. So to, exam to show you how that works, um, we'll just go back to this lo loco, um, press the button again, and then select the loco, wait till it's flashing, select it again. It's now running again, turn on the sound, and you'll hear it run. Now if I hit the power button again, you can see track on and track off. If I hit the track off button, the track will now, and you can hear the loco will slowly wind down its sound. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to DCC. I know it's only a quick video, but uh, I just wanted to show you the basics so that you've got a good idea that you know if you're just starting off in the hobby or you're not sure whether you want to go DC or DCC, at Kingsbury Model Railway we thoroughly recommend uh, DCC and we also recommend Digitracks and there are other brands out there, there's Markland and there's NCE and it really depends on whether you're a member of a local club. So always check if you're going to run at a local club, work out whether they run Digitracks or they run NCE or even uh, Marklin or another kind of uh, digital command control system. So always check which one it is first and then align yourself with the club uh, uh, controller system so that you, when you run at home, everything you do is compatible. So uh, with that, uh, we'll sign off and I uh, hope you've enjoyed this short video about uh, DCC basics.